may ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father God, we ask you to remember those that are sick, Lord. Those that's in the hospitals, oh God. Those in the nursing homes, oh hallelujah. Lord, we ask you to go throughout the nursing homes and the hospitals and touch and heal their bodies, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to remember even those that's not able to be here, Lord, to bless them and to help them, oh God. Remember even those that's on the streets, oh Lord, those that without shelter, without food, without clothes, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to minister to that need, Lord, for you see the needs of the people, oh Lord Jesus. We ask you to remember even those that's in the military, oh God, that's stationed all over the world, oh God. We ask you to encamp your angels around about them, Lord, to shield and protect them from dangers, from seen and unseen dangers. We ask you, Lord, to even go, Lord, where the places where the hurricanes and the earthquakes and different things that attack in the, the, the countries, oh God. Lord, we ask you to move in, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to shield and protect them and those that went through the hurricanes, oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless them with their, whatever their need of, Lord. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask you even to help our politicians, oh God. Those that's in charge, our president, and vice president, men and women in government, oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that they will do the people right, Lord. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus. For you are a great God. You're a mighty God, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to have your way in the service today, Lord. To sing your anointing, oh God. To give some soul a so to hear the word that they say, what must, must we do to be saved, Lord? We ask you, Lord, to fill them with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And those that have been baptized in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you for repentance in their souls. Lord, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done. Oh, Lord, remember the ministry that, the, the, that goes forth today, Lord, to anoint them in the name of Jesus, to preach the word, Lord. Father God, you know what we need today, Lord. You know our needs. Lord, we supply our needs, Lord. Whether it's a spiritual need, a physical need, a mental need, Lord, have your way. Lord, we thank you, we pray you. We count all things done as we have asked in faith, believing that it's already done. We say, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for we believe it is done in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen.
song to us. This song is personal. I can't sing it for you and you can't sing it for me. So you can only tell God what you need of him. Hallelujah.
all that we got so many sisters that work behind the scenes. And let me tell you something. It's not about one name or two names or anything. These sisters came together and, and they came together. They came together. I'm going to say that one. Brothers, let us salute our sisters. Come on, come on. Amen. Let's just unless I absolutely needed to. But the words of life that was spoken throughout this time. And I say to the committee, they had three weeks for a break. And I know we got the council coming up, but I've already spoken to some of them. You got three weeks of a break. And after that, we they are coming back together to plan Women's Conference 2024. Yes. Yes. Because what the Lord gave me in terms of us being a nation, for those who weren't here, Bethlehem Temple was filled with almost women. Yes, it was. This house was almost nearly full with sisters. Yes. And as I looked upon that, I was it was impressed upon me. And we didn't even have those who we thought was going to be here and couldn't make it, if those who we thought was going to be here didn't make it, it would have almost been standing room only in the yes, sanctuary. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what are you saying, Pastor Ryan? God has more for us to do. Yes, yes. And I'm excited already about Women's Conference 2024. Yes. I, I'm telling y'all right now, I am so excited about what God is doing with the House of Bethlehem. Yes. Aren't you excited about what God is doing with us? And, and to cap it off today, we thank God for our, our, I would say keynote speaker, but our preacher for the hour. Can we celebrate God for a band of friends? tell every young person, every young sister, when the mothers of the house can be here from start to finish. Yes, yes, yes. The mothers of the house yes. were here from start to finish. Yes. Amen. Yes. God is good. Yes. And we celebrate him for his goodness and his kindness. Amen. We, we, I didn't get a chance to do this last week and some things happened on this week. Amen. Can you help me celebrate the birthday of our precious sister from Greece, Sister Olia. Can you help me celebrate? <laughs> our precious sister. And for those who see, I'll say Olia, and some like, who? Sis, can you stand, please? <laughs> this is Sister Olia. Bethlehem Temple is now, we are now international. Yes. We go to yes. Beautiful. Yes. She came on over here to see 
to see her her man and then fell in love with this church. Yeah. Yeah. And she is a member of Bethlehem Temple. She supports us. She, yeah, she watches when we are streaming. And we thank God for her. Watch with her family. I thank God for folks like that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. She is our yeah. Amen. We also have another birthday to celebrate. Amen. Yeah. One of the great jewels of Bethlehem Temple. When I say a lady, she, this woman is a lady. Yes, she is. All my life, she has been a lady. Yes. A mentor. Yes. And not by what she said, but how she walked in yes. her life. Yes. And you helped help me all celebrate. Thank you for the moment. Mother Cox is 85, 83, 83. And you know what? That is wisdom that you cannot purchase anywhere. Bethlehem, we are blessed. We are blessed. Amen. This, this, we won't take our time today. I know we're a little tired, but you want to know what? Let's let us celebrate the Lord for what God is doing in and with us. Amen. Amen. To God. We're at this time, this, this is a part where everybody can take part. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to uh, bail upon our most paramour, and I'm going to ask Elder Rock if you would help us out today. Yes. Amen. So we got brothers in the kitchen ready to serve a little bit later. Amen? Amen. 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 It's time to get an offering time in the house of Bethlehem. Can we still celebrate the Lord for time? Amen. Amen. the Lord and honor him with our substance. Some of us are able to uh, render our tithing and our offering as unto the Lord by way of give reply. Uh, you can do that right from your phone or your electronic device. Amen. Go to Bethlehem Temple and you'll see a uh, face of yours truly. We will change that soon. Amen. And then you can uh, render your tithing and your offering unto God. Let that pastor say this because sometimes we get the, the, a, a misconception of tithing and offering. You can't pay God. You can't pay God. We render a tithe after the order of Melchizedek in terms of keeping covenant with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask everybody to please stand. Those who are coming, those who did it online, God bless you. But those who are coming around at this time, we'll ask everybody to please stand, face the wall. Our musicians are going to give us some good offering music. Amen. And we're going to ask that you start from the rear and come around as we bless the Lord in Jesus' name.
question coming from uh, Lady Nikita Tinsley, followed by Lady Tinsley will be uh, Sister Rosetta McNeil with the bio of the preacher. And then after that, the next voice you will hear after Sister Rosetta will be that of God's preacher for the hour in that order. Let's receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Bishop Carl A. Turner is diocesan. 
they now are affiliated with the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. Amen. 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 And we just rise to our feet as we greet the great woman of God and say, Pastor Gail, Pastor Gail, preach the word. Preach the word. Pastor Gail, Pastor Gail, preach the word. Preach the word. And 
we're holding at 11 grand. Wow. 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 Right now, we have 11 grand, and I thank and praise God for that. And I thank and praise of God, you know, she read my bio. We, um, James and I have just been uh, companions for, you know, since God got us together. It's, it's funny because people think, you know, it's, it's well, I, I'm just saying, my pastor, he asked me to marry him on our first date. <laughs> 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 yeah, it when we, uh, you know, it was our match when we got together, yeah. our, our first date, he knew that I was going to be his yeah. wife, and I, I knew that that was my husband. Wow. I thank you, praise God. It hasn't been easy, yeah. hasn't always been harmonious, yeah. but here we are, 44 yeah. years later, yeah. and happy as far as. We have empty nests and have for quite a while, but we never get tired of talking to each other. Yes. You know, sometimes people think, you know, my girlfriend said to me, she said, what do you have to talk about? I, well, we talk about stuff because we talk nonstop. Yes. <laughs> but you know, that's God. That's God. God will do that for you. God will do that for you. And only God, only God can do that. But I praise God. Well, as we get into our scripture, I was given Romans, the 12th chapter, so let's turn there. Okay. You know, as, as you're turning, um, Paul, the Paulina pistols are so wonderful. I love Paul's writing. And this particular book of Romans is Paul's book. This is really Paul's book. Paul is trying to give us, uh, teach us the fundamentals of the gospel. And that's what he does in the book of Romans. This was his third missionary journey. And Paul gives us the doctrines. Uh, and our pastor has been teaching on those doctrines. And this is what we are to convey to the world. That's what the world needs to see in us. When uh, Paul is teaching, his, the first few chapters is the doctrine of condemnation. The second is the doctrine of justification. The third is sanctification. The fourth is glorification. Yes. And the fifth and final one is consecration. Yes. Then he tries to move and tell us how to live, how to walk, how to talk. Yes. He tells us about God's relationship with the Jews and the Jews' relationship back with God. Paul is, he's so complete in this book of Romans. That's why it's worth Studying. Yes. The yes. book of Romans is worth studying. And uh, Pastor has a book of Bishop D. Rayford Bell uh, that he studies out of because Bishop Bell did a complete study, a total and complete study of the book of Romans. Romans is our, is our doctrine. That's where we are to learn. That's where we are to, you know, keep our dwelling. Anything you want to know about the doctrine, Paul gives you that in the book of Romans. All right, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and let's read it together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect the Lord of God. Thank you, Jesus. And be not conformed to this world. 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right. When we talk about conforming, we know that that is prevalent in the world today. Not only are people conforming, but they are also trying to be exactly like the world. They don't want to be called out for any reason. Nobody wants to be pointed out. Everybody wants to compromise. And that's the big word today. Compromise. You won't find that in the Bible. You will not find compromise in the Bible. The Bible is black and white. I worked for the state government, and I know we wrote documents, and we would have them, and, you know. But every time someone could put a hole in it and say, well, now this is a gray area. You can't do that with God's word. Nice. You can't find a gray area. God's word is black and white. God's word is real. It's settled. God put it in a way we can't change his word. We cannot find gray areas. Not in God's word. God's word stands as it has for thousands and thousands of years. God has not changed and he will not change. We see in his word. That's the way God wants it. That's what God said and it is forever. Seven. It's forever. Seven. We can't conform. We can't compromise. It's time out for that. Don't you see the signs of the devil? Don't you see that these are the last and evil days? Satan wants us to conform. Satan wants us to contour to what the world is doing. We got to stand up yes. and stand up yes. and be counted for Christ. Amen. We want to make it in. These are the last and evil days. Satan is the power of the world. Don't forget that. He has the power. He does. God allows him yes. that privilege to have that power, but we know the things of the world, what's going on down here, what we see with our eyes is going to be gone. It's not going to last always. What we see with our eyes, that's deceiving. It's deceptive. It's a facade. It's not real. You gotta focus on the eternal. Yes, yes. You gotta see beyond what is going on. Well, yes. We have to look behind the curtains and see what God really has. Because yes. all of this is gonna pass away. The yes. world system, the world time, all these things are going to pass. They're not going to be here always. And we have got to be ready. We may go singly. We may go collectively when God calls us back. But we still have to be ready. Thank you. When Paul is talking in the first verse, he says, I beseech you. I beg you. I beg you, he said. I beg you, therefore. By the mercies of God. Aren't God's mercies wonderful? Yes. What would we do without the mercy? And you know, God gives us new mercies every morning. Is that what the Bible says? Yes. New mercies every morning. If it wasn't for his mercy and his grace continually being showered on us day in and day out, the mercies of God. God remembers our friend. 
He knows we are nothing but dust. Yes, yes, yes. He remembers that. And he's ever mindful. He's ever mindful. So I beseech you, I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Not give it, present it. When you give someone a present, you give it to them. You let them have it. This isn't something, this is not out of the ordinary. God is saying this is not out of the ordinary. This is what we should be doing. Presenting our bodies. I'll never forget when Sister Pullen came down with cancer and she was talking to God. She said, oh God, why me? And the Spirit answered her audibly. Why not you? Why not you? Audibly, God answered her back. Our bodies are to be presented as a living sacrifice each and every day. We don't know what we're going to come across. We don't know if there's a sniper in the Walmart when we go. We don't know. We don't know what's behind. But these evil and wicked minds, you know, Satan is running rampant. His time is winding up. If we can't see it, he certainly knows. He knows that his time is winding up. And so because of that, we need to be ready. Present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy, holy. Why are we to present it holy? Because God is holy. Yes, yes. Our bodies daily. God is holy. We should be able to present our bodies holy each and every day. If we've done something, it's time to get on the phone with the pastor. Pastor, restore me back. Restore me back. I've stumbled. And we're all going to stumble at some point and fall. But it's time to get up. Don't let Satan leave you down there and say, what's the use? Get on the phone. Call the pastor. Pastor, restore me back to my God. Restore me. Hallelujah. So that we can be holy. So that we can be holy like our Father. Our Father is holy. Acceptable. We need to be acceptable. That God can use us. We don't know. We don't know if that person, this is the last time that they're, they, they've already decided in their mind that they're going to take their life. And that smile that you give them yes. might just give them that hope to not do that. Because we know that Satan's ultimate goal is to let us stay with Satan. Let us just give up. But there is another side. There is more on the other side. We have to look beyond what we can see. And let God use us. Let God use our bodies. Holy, acceptable. Unto God, which yeah. is your reasonable service. Hey. It's not something out of the ordinary. God gave us his very best. God gave us his very best. Yeah. And when we look at what Christ went through for us, oh, what Christ went through. We talk about the, the you know, that was the worst kind of death. What Jesus went through was the very worst kind of death. When you study and see what he did, I mean, just one of the things that Christ went through for us, we wouldn't be able to do it. We wouldn't be able to do it, but Christ, he went through all that so that you and I might have a chance to the tree of life. And we think about the cross, and we think about what he went through. The piercing, 
you know, what, the, from his side, the piercing of his side, plucking out his beard, spitting on him. Can you imagine allowing someone to spit on you? That is the lowest, vulgarest thing you can do. And Christ went through it without a word. Without a word. He went through all of that to restore you and I back to our Father. Oh, what Christ went through. So our reasonable service, our reasonable service is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Each and every day, we want God to be pleased with what we're doing, what we're saying, how we're walking, how we're talking. We want to please God. Your reasonable service. And be not conformed. Conform is a transitive verb. To give the same shape, outline, contour. To be in agreement or harmony. Similar, identical. That's what conform means. And that's what we're doing today. So many of us. I was so tickled to hear about your, uh, nobody does that anymore, to have a shut-in fast. When you do that, you're serious with God. When you do something like that, it's serious with God. God recognizes when you make that kind of a sacrifice. God recognizes that. That's why he comes in like a flood. He recognizes that. Yes, he does. And he's pleased with that. And that's what we want to do. We want to please him. But a shut-in is getting serious with God. And when we get on our knees, and you know, when you're in a shut-in, we were flat on our faces. We were flat on our faces. When you want God to do something, when you want God to get serious with God, just fast. Put, move, move that food away. Move that plate away. And see won't God answer your prayers. He'll come in like a flag. He'll come in like a flag. He recognizes. He recognizes that sacrifice that you're making. And God will come in like a flag. All right. Be not conformed to this world. We know what's in this world. We know everything about this world. Say, let's go to 1 John. Go to 1 John in your Bibles. 1 John. Turn to 1 John, the second chapter. Let's talk about this world, the world system, and the world's way. 1 John 2 and 15. We're just going to read it. The scripture admonishes us. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Look what it says. Look what it says. For all that is in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's why First John tells us not to love the world or the things of the world. We can't love the world or the things. We can't love the world system. Satan is the power, prince of power. Isn't he? That's what the Bible tells us. The world is sitting in his lap. Uh-huh. And he is in control and he's riding high right now. He is riding high. The wickedness, some of the wicked things that are going on, we can't even imagine how this is in people's minds. 
to do such wicked things today. But that's why the Bible tells us not to love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. All that is of this world is going to pass away. So that Mercedes that you're driving. <laughs> that Mercedes that you're driving. That Volvo that you've been lusted after. Huh? Come on now. Come on now. That ain't going to get you into heaven. That's not going to get you anyway. Look what I got. Look at the status it puts me in. Be mindful of self. If you take yourself, 
If you look in the mirror, if you're in that mirror seeing the, those marks that are on the side of you, huh? We gotta come up to where God wants us to be. And if we're doing that, we don't have time to look at Sister Louise. That's right. We don't have time to talk about Brother so and so. Yes. We have to do what we need to do to come up. Yes. Because we have to be ready at all times. We got to be ready. It's time out. It's time out for looking around and watching other people. You need to concentrate on you. Yes. Get you ready. Yes. And we can only do that by the transforming. It's not what Brother tells us. The transforming. Yes. Now, when we transform, we change. Yes. We change in position itself. Change in position or structure. Change the outward appearance. Uh -huh. Change in character. Yes. Change in condition. Yes. Convert. Yes. That's how we transform. Uh -huh. Can't nobody come and talk to us if we're showing them our wicked side. Yes. 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 If we're so busy in Walmart, downgrading the poor little cashier that short you to the five cents. <laughs> Why won't you look at what do you mean? That was a nickel. I need that nickel. Everyone around you, you got so loud. Everybody around you is watching. You've lost your witness. That little cashier needs Jesus. And you've lost your witness because you allowed your arrogance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh? That's what shot. Uh-uh. It wasn't Jesus. When people see you, they should see Jesus. Yes. Yes. I walked in my, uh, my, one of my grocery stores Monday, and the girl stepped back. She said, I see God all over you. Jesus. She said, I see God all over you, Jesus girl. <laughs> but she told me I see God all over. Yes. I want people to see God in me. Yes. I want somebody to know I'm living for Christ. Yes. I want somebody to know I walk for my Savior. When I attract that them, I can go in and tell them. Don't know, no, it doesn't mean I have to sit down and teach them my Bible class. Right. Just tell them what God's done for me. Yes. Just tell them how God has watched over me. Hey. Tell them how God, good God is. Yes. And how you never want for anything when you're in love. Yes. We never want for anything when we give it to God. Yes. God will come in like a flood. It doesn't matter what you need. You're God's child. Yes. And God looks out for us. Yes. Yes. We need Jesus. The transform. We want to change. We want to change. We want to stick out like a sword. Yes. Yes. You know, when you go to different meetings and you know, people get into groups and all that kind of stuff, we look around because we don't want to stand out. We got to stand up. Yes. Yes. We got to stand up. We got to stand up. We got to move and come. Yes, yes, yes. People can't see the Jesus in us when we're acting like the devil. Yes. 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 Nobody can see Jesus in you when you're acting like the devil. And it's time. And high time for us to do what God wants us to do. Right. Thank you. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Look at what 
he say here? And again, this is a Pauline epistle. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. <laughs> He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Look at what the Bible says. So those, that old habit that you have. Where have I got my father's temple? <laughs> the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We can't say that we have our father's temper. We can't talk about that type of thing. We are become new. Jesus paid a price for us to come become new. Yes, it is. Christ suffered terribly for us to be new. Yes, We aren't held down by what Satan's devices are. That's not what we're about. We're new creatures. And we're to walk in that new life. Can nobody see Jesus if we're not portraying Jesus? They can't see the Jesus when it's in behind your mean demeanor. And you won't even smile. Can't nobody see Jesus in that? Yes. Behold, all things are become new. We're a new creature. All things are passed away. All right. Ephesians 4 and 22 says that you put up concerning the former conversation. The old man which is corrupt. Corrupt means it can be torn down. Yes. Corrupt means it can the moth and canker can come in and tear it up. The corrupt according to the deceitful lust. But it goes on to say, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man. Which often God has created in righteousness and true holiness. Can't get away from that holiness. Can't get away from holiness. God is holy. God is holy. We have to be holy. We have to walk in the newness of life. We have to be transformed. We can't stay like we were. The Holy Ghost comes in to clean us up. To set us on the right road. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is the difference. And do you know now there are churches that are saying you don't need the Holy Ghost? Right. There's churches. Oh, Pastor, you mean it? There are churches that are. Honey, I need the Holy Ghost every day. Yeah. I need the Holy Ghost every day. If I'm going to the back, come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on. I'm going to the library. Oh, now, surely, honey, come on, Jesus. Come on. You don't know where Satan's traps are for you. And he has them set. He's ready to pounce on you. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Ghost. You've got to be moved by the Spirit of God. God has got to help you. You don't know where that 18 wheeler is that's ready to run you over. Because Satan has said that. Satan wants the saints to go down. He doesn't want to see us prosper. He doesn't want to see us go. He is out to get you. And that's how you have to live your life. You have to live your life defensively, ready at all times. Huh? Ready at all times. Jesus, if you come now, I'm ready to go. 
Yes. 
can't get around that word one way or the other. And law, that's why some of these criminals get off so easy. But they look for, they look for what? Loopholes. But I read the Bible. Since I was 18 years old, I got saved at 18. I never read the Bible up to that point there. And I haven't found no loopholes yet. So get down to mind right now. There's no loopholes in the Word of God. So you may just about to come on up here and make a calling and a legend sure. Who here today is not ready. Come on down right now. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on.
saying, saying I want to go yes. and being prepared to go yes. are entirely two different things. Yes. I want to go to the mall. But unless you have gas in your car or a ride to get there, you ain't getting there. I want to go to heaven, but if you have not first repented of your sins. See, we don't talk about that a lot anymore. You don't get to go to heaven just because you say, I love Jesus. No, that's not my. You have to repent. Understand and recognize that the role that you are is not conducive to spiritual growth in life that's everlasting. Right, that's right. But when you come to and have that eureka moment, yeah, yeah. I'm here to tell you, you don't need an altar call. Right. You don't need preachers. Yes. You don't need the oil. Yes. God can fill you right where right. you are. That's right, that's right, that's right. And then if you haven't been baptized, then after that, well, all we can say is, well, we heard them speak as we spoke. Uh -huh. Here now is one. What does hinder you from being baptized? And regardless of what the new theology is today, you still have to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, you need that two-piece. Need it. I know it sounds funny. Water and spirit. You, you, you can't have more of that. You know, you gotta take it. You gotta be buried in his name. The Bible declares that there is no name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved. Other than what? The name of Jesus. Can we celebrate the Lord one more time? When she starts talking about Jesus, so a fist come at That's somebody who loves the Lord. And I'm here to tell somebody today, if you walk out of this house, and, if, and you didn't give your life to Jesus, and for paraventure you go off into eternity, mm. this message will meet you in judgment. Because now, you know, everybody, we all feel like we got time. And we're living in the spirit of entitlement. So we feel that time should be ours. Well, my friend, brothers and sisters, time belongs to God. The word declares the day you hear his voice, ours is not your heart. Everything you need is right here, right now. His next service is not promised. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'll go ahead and say this. The rest of this day is not promised. That's right. Why are you going there, Pastor? There's just a tugging on my spirit. Some of, some of us don't have nearly as much time as we think. You can either be a spiritual Autobot or a spiritual Decepticon. And as Optimus looked at um, he looked at a Megatron, he said, this day one shall stand, one shall fall. That's right, that's right. But I'm here to tell somebody, God's counsel shall stand. Yes, he shall. We thank God for the words of life. We thank God for all of you, my precious brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. How many just love what God is doing in our lives?
Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 